So it's two days later, this is where we came the other day, Adam and I, we were coming through on our way to Port Renfrew and we thought let's just nip into Gordon Bay and have a look at this and it's absolutely fantastic. Well it was fantastic the other day, so we predict that we're going to get similar conditions and it was what, minus eight this morning Adam? Yeah. Bloody freezing, I am freezing my giblets off but I've got my merino wool layers and my gloves and my really cool uh, toque so I should be all right. So the hope is that as the sun rises behind this little islet, this mist will get hit and backlit by the sun, which might even create rays. But it's a little bit choppy right now. I could do without that, it's a little bit of wind, so hopefully that dies down. And everything's got this gorgeous little bit of frost on it. I don't know if you can, you can tell, but these limbs of this tree and all of this, this uh, frost that's on these, these ferns here are absolutely gorgeous. So hopefully we'll get some killer shots. So we've got about, what, half an hour? About a half hour wait, sun should pop up and then magic might happen. Ooh. So you've got tea, oh. I've got coffee. Yorkshire tea. Oh, Yorkshire tea, oh, proper. <clears throat> I've got me coffee. Cheers. Cheers, mate. What's the coldest you've ever been on a shoot? Minus 40. Where was that? Uh, Jasper, Columbia Ice Fields. Yeah. God, it was cold. So we drive around, We'd see something, I'd jump out of the car, take a picture and then jump back in the vehicle. That bad? That was horrible. <laughs> I was up at Abraham Lake and it was minus 35 with no wind chill and then we went to Windy Point. <laughs> Good place. Which was aptly named and it was so cold that instead of getting out of the car I just rolled the window down just to see what it felt like and instantly screamed. I <laughs> just screamed, went no! Put the window back up and, and left. And I, you know, I'm, I'm a chunky chicken, I can take a little bit of cold. It was horrendous. The coldest I've ever been in was um, Algonquin Park. Back when I was in high school, we went on a winter camping trip. And um, it was so cold that the trees, you could hear them cracking because the moisture inside was freezing. All the sap would. And there was two or three kids. Um, one had frostbite on his nose. And I mean, it was brutal. I mean, it was clear like this, but it was it was really, it was dangerously cold. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure how cold, it was definitely, it was, someone said it was minus 50, but I don't know if that's true or not. I spent most of the weekend in the car with a heater on. Yeah. And uh, one of the teachers that we went with, he had an old Volkswagen, one of the old air-cooled ones. Of course, it didn't have any heat. So we had to take it in turns driving with him. And I remember he, he had a beard and he had these big icicles coming yeah. off his beard. <laughs> <laughs> driving like this, oh god. It doesn't feel good and then you get it on your eye, your eyelashes and your eyebrows and your, your nostril hairs. Yeah, well I had big icicles hanging off me. <laughs> <those hairs. laughs> hanging off your spider's legs. <laughs> yeah. And then when you get older you get hairs in your ears so you got icicles hanging off your ears. <laughs> <laughs> I pluck those. We're getting a bit of light there, just on the peaks. It's starting to creep in. I reckon 25 minutes, 20 minutes. I hope it's not too far over to the, behind the mountain there. Well, we know that it, that it was in the right spot the other day. I think we're safe. We shall f***ing see. Hopefully you can see this magic light that's just started to creep into the scene. The sun is popping up over that ridge and look at that gorgeous bit of color that we're getting in the sky there. And this really gorgeously backlit bit of mist in the background. So when the sun pops, things start to happen. Anyway, I better get back to shooting. So I don't use ND filters all that often, but uh, this is so bright, I'm gonna have to put on an ND. So the guys at Breakthrough Filters sent me this. Thanks guys, I haven't actually used this. It's sat in my camera bag for a year and my fingers don't work, yet I've got to open this thing. Oh my God, Shit. Why do you have to pack it so well? There you go, I reckon I'm in. Okay, let me strap this on. So for those of you that are not familiar with what a neutral density filter can do, basically it's like putting sunglasses on your lens. It stops out light so that it forces your camera to take a much longer exposure and it creates the illusion of a reflection. It gives you much smoother water like this. It's not ideal, but it's a good workaround when you've got wind on the water. Adam and I were just commenting on how challenging this is. So even with the ND, 
Uh, that light, it's, it's a little bit much. It's, uh, I was hoping it would be tempered and softened by the kind of mist that we got the other day, which was absolutely fantastic. We haven't quite got that, and so the ND is a bit of a compromise. It's a workaround, but it's not ideal. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to switch to the 24 to 105 now and kind of forget this uh, wider scene and kind of zoom in and try and isolate an interesting detail with some nice backlight and see if that looks any better. Well, all I managed to get was this shot of Adam, which I am going to use as a bartering tool the next time he gets all greedy when I'm in desperate need of a lens wipe deep in the forest. Well, we tried. Um, I think I got an okay shot or two. What, what do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those areas. There's, there's tons of great potential here, but it's, it's, it's difficult because the sun's right glaring in your face. So it's, I think I might have got something, but I always like to say, oh, I don't think I've got anything just to play it safe. <laughs> <laughs> we just needed that little bit more mist. I, I think, I think part of the problem is, is that I mean, the fog is great, but there's just too much wind and it, it kept blowing the wind away from the trees. Yeah. We were hoping for some like god beams or something coming through the trees. Oh, I do like some god beams. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the second time this week that we've done this. The first one was kind of like a, oh, let's just go and have a look-see. We got here too late. <laughs> Today was planned. He even spent the night here in his car and uh, I got up at 5 a.m. to come out and try and get this. But you win some, you lose some, you know? It's still worth trying. It's still a gorgeous morning that we got to enjoy. Yep. The question is, do we come back again? Well, I'm gonna spend another night here, I think. F***ing hardcore, man. <laughs> I am not. Almost, but not quite. What is your favorite type of light? Oh, ooh, that's a good question. I think it depends what the subject is, um, but I think my favourite type of light is where the sun has gone down or it's just risen and you get that, what I call the blush, it's, it's that afterglow that you get once the sun's either on its way down or it's gone down and things just light up and the reason why I like it is often you'll get that cloud that's overhead and the light, let's say you've got these pink clouds over the top of your head, it bounces down and coats everything on, on the ground with this pink hue, like a salmon and pink or a red or whatever colour it is, it, it's when you get that, that bounce light that comes off. But also my second favourite kind of light is, um, and it's what I talked about in that Butch Art Gardens video, is where you're taking a picture of a tree or something and the sun is up and it's blasting down into a pond and then reflects up. Oh, and you get that dapple. Yeah, and it, it yeah. comes from below. And uh, that's, oh, that's very juicy. Juicy. Very juicy. <laughs> what about yours? <sighs> well, I, I, you're definitely right. It depends on the subject. Uh, but I, I did talk about this in one of my videos I did about light. And I hate to say it, but my favorite type of light is actually when everything is just flat and overcast. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I like kind of woodland stuff. Um, that seems to work for me. Now I do like a bit of mist in there. Oh yeah. Uh, and you know, the waterfalls. But mind you, this, this waterfall we're going to now, I mean, if the light was flat, it would just be the same as last time I was there, um, the first time. Yeah. But with this reflected light, it just adds a little bit more, something just a little different, a little bit more interest. Yeah. Something that was kind of unpredictable. So I like stuff like that too. Yeah, I agree. What is your all time favorite image that you shot? Well, I have one hanging on my wall at home in my bedroom that I've, I've always really liked, but it's not, it's not, it's not in your face kind of dramatic or anything like that. It's just a forest scene with some nice soft light. I think, I think you saw it actually. I like the mood on that one. But I mean, that's one of my, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's one that I really like. I have a, a few images that I really like. Do you have, do you have a, an all time favorite image? My favourite is usually the last really good one that I got. You know what I mean? 
It's like whatever's recently, you knew it was good at the time. Um, but I guess the, the shots that go viral and, and do well, that you don't, you don't necessarily like. No. And then there's other shots that you think are absolutely jizzy, absolutely gorgeous, and and people don't like them, you know. So it's, I don't know, I'll, I'll have to have a think about that. I, th I, I think what it ends up being is that it, I think some of those shots that you take that you really like are, one, are ones that we had a really good day and it was just really great just to be out there and, and you remember, you know, whatever it was. I mean, it could have been the, the ambience of the place or good company or, you know, just yeah. a really nice time, you know. Or, or what it means to you. I think, actually, I think my, one of my favourite shots I took was my very last Moraine Lake image and it was uh, it was you know I needed it badly because I've been there a hundred times or more <clears throat> often with clients workshops and I just got nothing you know and I, I really worked hard kept getting up at four o'clock in the morning driving all the way up, up to Banff you know like it, it was brutal and I failed 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 and I had my very, very last shoot when I was leaving Banff to come back to Vancouver Island, and you know, I was pretty sad. And I needed this, I knew I wasn't ever coming back. And I needed this shot, and sure enough, um, this little gap opened up, which is what you want. You want mist, you want low-lying clouds, you want flat water, you need all of these ingredients to align so that you, you get this little gap of light that hits the mountains and they glow and they reflect, and I got it. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it takes a long time sometimes. I just hate it when people just walk up to a scene and the light just opens up for them. And <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult not to be bitter, isn't it? When you you, got you a cell phone. Yeah, you work your ass off and suffer and <laughs> sacrifice to get a shot, and you never get it. And then they show up their first time with an iPhone, and it's brilliant. <laughs> you bastards. <laughs> But it's funny, uh, like the shots, as far as favorite shots go, um, the ones that I tend to hang on my wall, and I do hang my own photography on my wall, are the ones that aren't in your face dramatic, but usually more subtle. Yeah. I just find those ones easier to look at. The sun, beautiful sunrises and that, I just find it a bit over the top, you know. I, I think they're great for the wow factor. If you're posting them, and if, that, if your idea is to just try and get as many thumbs up or likes as you want, then those are the ones that are going to do, that are going to do it, not the subtle ones. Yeah, and there's a huge difference between um, a small 4x5 on Instagram that goes viral and then a, a spectacularly large pano that's seven feet wide, fills a wall, and people just can't walk past without gawking at. Yeah. We, but it wouldn't. It would totally fail on Instagram, you know. So it all depends on the medium as well as to as to how well an image is received. I think. Yeah. No, I agree. Oh. Uh, well, I have a. You know, I, I mean, I can only relate to what I have. But I mean, I, I have an image that I really like that I took recently up at uh, uh, San Jose Bay. The panel. No, it's actually a close-up of a sand pattern, and. I put a, I had a sand dollar, so there's this, this pattern of sand and it looks like old growth trees. Yeah. And then I got this sand dollar and I put it in the scene. It looks like a moon rising or a sun, right? But I put it on Instagram and of course nobody's gonna look at it because they think it's either a, a, a chalk drawing or, or, or some kind of amateur painting. Yeah. But it's not until you look at it closely that you realize it's actually a photograph of sand. Juicy. Very juicy. <laughs>